بسم آب و ول و منفس دوس اهلو املاک عمین سادکان هوی با اجزابهیر دستی بالاتیو لکنوج مسگانای جبال اجزابهیرن با مسنجو عمسگن اسر عوتارن بالو با بگنا زمرول اسر عوتار بالو با بگنا Remember what we taught last week in the 40th, 40th Torah portion, where we was just able to touch on um, um, Bela'am, Balaam, and um, at the end of that reading and that feeding, that study, we had introduced um, the Baal Peor and pointed to the uh, Baal Peor, or Fior, Baal Poria, Poria, Baal Peor, incident, Peoria, so, so, so to speak, incident. But this is about Israel and Baal Peor, when we get to Numbers chapter 25. And um, take notes of this, because um, Numbers chapter 25 is the Israel and the Baal or Baal Peor incident. And it's very significant because um, Balak, Balak in the last Torah portion, the 40th um, reading, he wanted to... Um, curse the children of Israel. The king of Moab wanted to curse the children of Israel. So he hired uh, a local prophet of some repute, um, Balaam, or Balaam, to do the dirty deed. But Balaam, in communicating, in getting into the, the higher conscience of the spirit world, he recognized that Yahweh, the true God, would not allow him to do so. So he basically was axed over and over, and, and he was disobedient. There's the ass and donkey incident that many in um, Bible, Sunday Bible school, have learned about um, Balaam and the donkey and what happened on the road with the angel. But what is even um, more significant than that is the fact that Israel could not be cursed, that the chosen people could not be cursed. But what Balaam did reveal to Balak, the king of Moab, was that you can't curse this people, but what you could do is you can corrupt the people. And here's where in the New Testament sense we read and we learn in Revelation of the, of the doctrine of Balaam. And we had highlighted and noted the way and the error and the doctrine of the teaching of Balaam and also noted that Balaam was not spiritual True spiritual ones will regard him as a spiritualist or a shaman, but he was more a psychical. He was he was psychical. His power was he had he had great psychic power, and with the allowance of the Almighty, he was able to contact and communicate with Yahweh, with Yah, and in communicating with the Almighty. This is where he was told that he could not, he would not be allowed to curse. And there was no divination against Israel and a beautiful prophecy, you understand, concerning us and concerning the true Israel was revealed at that time. You understand, which is significant, how this was revealed and through whom. So through almost a psychic reader who was, who was commissioned, in a sense, to, to, to curse the chosen people, but recognize he could not, you understand, he revealed instead a blessing. And this totally, of course, disappointed Balak, and Balak was angry and upset, you understand, and very delusional, as most temporal rulers and leaders apart from those who are guided by the Almighty and, and invariably and indubitably are. Now, so we learn about Bela'am. We learn about Bela'am in the RSS number 40. Now in the RSS number 41, which is called Finhas. Finhas. You understand? Or, or Pinhas, or some would say Pinches. You understand? Speaking of Phineas. Phineas in the Old Testament um, scriptures. His name, as we mentioned already, can be said in a variety of ways. And it comes down to the Af, or the Fe, the Fi, 
the Af or the Pe in ancient Egypt of the Nahas or Nahas, the Nas, you understand, which is the Ethiopic letter Ne, but in symbolic hieroglyphs was the serpent of wisdom, you understand, or the upright serpent. So we see the Kamite Mytho symbology, which is very important to explicate this Torah reading and feeding and to put it into its original into its original, what it was the original sense of the Torah. This is what we are studying. What was the original sense? So we see clearly there is an Egyptian in Finihas or Finhas. We have an Egyptian name when we do the etymology of it. But now, what's important for us to understand here with Israel and Baal Peor concerning Numbers chapter 25 and this particular parsha or kufl which is called Pinhas or Phineas which is the sixth word in the Hebrew the first distinctive word in the 41st um, weekly Torah portion in the annual Hebrew cycle of Torah reading and this is the eighth now in the book of Numbers of the Orit uh, Zehulk now, what's constituted here is Numbers 25, verses 10 to Numbers chapter 30, verse 1. Now, the Hebrews and, and the Jews in the Diaspora generally read this Torah portion in late June or July. Now, this, this kufl, this portion of parasha, it sets out laws for the Hebrew holy days. And now the Hebrews in ancient times and, and now Jews even in modern times also read parts of this kufl, this portion, as Torah readings for many of the Hebrew holidays. So this 41st Torah portion is very important <coughs> as, it, as, it, as, as it sets out many of the readings for a variety of the Hebraic and our our high holy days. For example, Numbers 28, 1 to 15 is the Torah reading for the Rosh Chodesh on a weekday, including when the 6th or the 7th of Hanukkah falls on the Rosh Chodesh. We have Numbers 28, 9 to 15, what they call the Maftir um, Torah reading for the Shabbat Rosh Chodesh. We have Numbers 28, 16 to 25, the Maftir Torah reading for the first two days of Fasika or Pesach, the Passover, Numbers chapter 28, verses 19 to 25, is the Maftir Torah reading for the intermediate days of the Chol HaMeod, or Moed, the seventh and the eighth days of of Pesach or Fasika, Numbers 28, uh, 26 to 31, the Maftir, the Torah reading for each day of Shavuot. We have Numbers 29, verses 1 to 6, the Maftir or the Torah reading for each day of Rosh Hashanah, the Rosh Hashanah or the New Year's, and this is what also coincides with the Ethiopian, um, the Ethiopian New Year's, September 11th, you understand, or the Hebrew New Year, which is which is a movable. You understand, sometimes they do align, and that's a a high holy day when the lunar and the solar do align. So we have this testimony with the Ethiopian New Year. You know, it was a New Year's Day. You understand, which corresponds to the third of the annual feast, or the last portion of the annual feast, which are the fall the fall um, feast and festivals of Yahweh or the Moedim. Now we have Numbers chapter 29, verses 7 to 11, the Mafti of the Torah reading for the Yom Kippur, the morning or the Shacharit, Service. We have Numbers 29, verses 12 to 16, the Maftir, or the Torah reading for the first two days of Sukkot. Numbers chapter 29, verses 17 to 25, the Maftir, or the Torah reading for the first intermediate days of Sukkot. Numbers chapter 29, verses 20 to 28 is the Torah reading for the second 
intermediate day of Sukkot, Numbers 29, verses 23 to 31, the Torah reading for the third intermediate day of Sukkot, Numbers chapter 29, verses 26 to 34, is the Torah reading for the fourth intermediate day of Sukkot, as well as the Hoshana Rabbah, the Hoshana Rabbah. Now we have Numbers chapter 29, verses 35 to 30 and 1, and this is the Mafti or the Torah reading for both the Shemeni Atzerit or Atzeret or Atzeret and the Simchat Torah. Now, uh, a summary of the 41st Torah reading or the Rastafari Sabbatical study number 41 would be after the sin of Bial Peor. There was also another census which took place. The daughters of the Lofahad. We have uh, Musa's successor. And then we have the offerings. The offerings are enumerated. Now, in speaking of coming out from the Egypt and going to the Canaan, the first incident that we need to address and, and to look into and to see its relevancy for us in the present time is Israel and Baal Peor, or Numbers chapter 25. And to note that what may be called physical offenses often illustrate the nature of spiritual crimes in a way that just trying to describe it could never really do justice to. Therefore, there's the hateful sin or chatiyat of adultery. Forcibly, this, this should impress upon I and I a, a sense of a loathsome injustice. And this is what prepares us. This is the preparation to the overstanding. In, in some degree, but yet major degrees, the enormity of the guilt, of the, of the guilt, if I, the, the, the guilt or the guiltiness of those who, while, while professing to be united or at one or atone to Christos, even to Christ in his kingly character, have surrendered their affections to the world. And, and now... This is to say a spiritual adultery. If we understand what adultery is and how loathsome that can be, especially to the affected parties, then we should understand and, and be prepared now to understand and to overstand in, 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 in great measure the enormity of, of the guilt and the guiltiness of those. This is where Barana Selassie, Bob Marley, had in his uh, song, Guiltiness, Rest Upon Their Conscience, but not just their conscience, he's the singer saying their conscience, but a, a true mature I and I have to recognize. This is where you really mature is when you now put yourself, you understand, within that sense so you can recognize and to confess in spirit and in truth your own guiltiness that even though you and I and I and I may profess that we are united, we are one with Christ in his kingly character. Yet, we must recognize how and where we have surrendered our affections to the seclora. How we have offend, uh, offended, offended our husband. You understand? The Baal, but the true Baal. You understand? The true husband or Christ. Is she? You understand? Christ that we are saying that we are married as his church, as his people, even as elect Rastafari. We are united with Christ in his kingly character. Yet, where have we surrendered our affections to the world? Where, in what ways have we surrendered our affections to the seclora? And now we can recognize, like the Beta Israel of the uh, Tintawi, the Kedem of, of old times, we can see clearly the example being set before us. We have permitted these impure affections 
to introduce us in spirit and in truth to the worship of demons. Now, what do I mean by this? If we are united with Christos, with Christ, therefore we should have not have surrendered any affections to the world, the seclorum. So we need to understand what the world and what the seclorum is from the perspective you understand, of Christ, from the perspective of the word, therefore from the perspective of the truth, irregardless of our personal opinions about that matter. Then we will be permitted to, to, to see. Then the blindness will come off of our eyes and, and we will recognize the, the impure worldly affections and how that has introduced us, you understand, even unwillingly into bowing to Babylon and to bowing, you understand, to the false gods of the world. And that bowing, that act of bowing, like they say, you bow to pressure. If you bow to the world, in the words, uh, the world is stronger than me, and, and what can I do? That's, that's how it is. Well, then one even unwillingly have bowed and in some sense is involved in the worship of these demons through their representative idols. You see, they have representative idols. Now, what are the representative idols of these demonic forces? The representative idols are the, the, the worldly fame, or the money, the so-called papers, the, the fashion of the world, and other like things. Take this down as a note, brothers, that 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, a very important reading in, in this regard, James chapter Chapter 4, verse 4, 1 Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 20. So to see, like Israel of old, which surrendered their affections to the world, even though they said they were united with Yahweh Eloheinu. They were united with Hashem. They were united, you understand, with the El Elohe Israel. But they were introduced into the worship of demons through their representative idols. You understand? In their time, the symbolic representatives in our time, we have fame, we have money, we have fashion, and we have other like things. L let us recall that as Delilah delivered the infatuated Samson, that Samson was infatuated with Delilah. She was the bomb. To Samson, you understand? The Lila was the bomb, man. She was a bomb B to to Samson. Samson was infatuated, you understand? But the Lila delivered this infatuated Samson into the hand of the Philistemawian of the Philistines to do what? To afflict him, to afflict him. Do you see these examples for the lost sheep? You understand the lost black sheep in this present time? And so, indeed, indeed, who those who yield to their carnal appetites, must become captives or caught up in definitely some wrestling if they're not captivated totally. They are still in this wrestling with the devil or they have become, if they have yielded themselves to these carnal appetites, they have become captives of Diablos in the, in the realest sense. So we can even see through Samson and Delilah's example a, 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 a principle and a teaching that's found in this Israel and Baal Peor incident that we have in Numbers chapter chapter 25. Now, there is this ground in the pilgrim's progress. Because we are pilgrims in this world, if you recognize what that means. So join us in this world. We're just passing through. You understand? Babylon. That's the true consciousness of the true Beit Israel. We're just passing through this. You understand? Even this, this experience that we have gone through for 400 plus years in the West, we are pilgrims. And there's a pilgrim progress. And this is placed near Beulah. Beulah. Beulah in the scripture. Write this down. Beulah is very important too. These names, as we've often emphasized, are very, very important. And there's now the festivities of the Baal Peor were on the borders of the Canaan. That the festivities now, where, where the sin of the Beta Israel occurs in this 41st, between last week's reading the 40th and this week's reading the 41st, occurs 
in a place called Baal Pior or the Baal of the opening. You understand? Which which was on the located on the borders of the Canaan. That is very important. The borders of the Canaan. So the peculiar fascinations of of Khatiyat, of sin, the attractions of the world, and 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 th- th- there's a lot of eye candy out there. There's a whole lot of eye candy. You understand? Spirit and truth. You understand? We of ourselves are not immune. You understand? We of ourselves, but in Him and through Him. You understand? And then also the personal responsibility. You understand? This is what this teaches us. You understand? Not that they were so bad and we are much better. No, we're in a we're in a heightened situation of these peculiar fascinations of chatiyat, of sin, of missing the mark, and the attractions of 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 this this world of this Babylon system. You understand? It's assailing us. It's assaulting us. It's assaulting our consciousness everywhere you turn. Go to your Twitter, your Facebook. It's, it's all over. These impure affections. You understand? But it has assailed those who were on the borderland of the realized rest. This realization of consciousness in the communion with Ha Elohim. They were on the border. See, see, it's Arayam, the Baal, Pior incident, and this Torah reading 41. You understand, as well as last Torah reading, 40th, Balaam, Balaam, and this, or concerning Balak, actually its name, but it introduces Balaam. You understand? Then we have the byproduct of Balaam now. You understand? Instruction to Balak to seduce the people who could not be cursed. Now they're being assailed by this, these impure affections, just like what's happening in the world while we're on this borderland of the realization of the rest, the arrest. You understand? In the communion, you understand? With the King of Kings and His Christ. For while the, 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 the loving voice of the Memphis Kedus, the, the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, while it's heard, that natural mystic, while that natural, natural mystic is heard, you understand? There are those tones, those serene and siren tones. You hear the siren tones of, of sin, of khatiyat. You understand? Are made also to reach the ear. So the loving voice of the Holy Spirit, the Memphis Caduceus is heard. But also the siren tones of khatiyat, the missing of the mark, are made also to reach the ear. And the mitmanan, the amanya, the true and the faithful, must ever, I and I and I must ever be on I and I guard, lest I and I friend be disregarded and his foe be received. You see? And, and this is what we said before when we was reasoning with one of I and I, I, and I um, brothers, you understand, know a, a spiritual Emmanuel. You understand, with reasoning, and we was talking about this very same uh, Torah portion and, 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 and Baal Peor, and how this is very much connected with what's assaulting, you understand, the lost sheep in this present time and getting them caught up in the, in the, the vain and impure affections, you understand, of the world and becoming captives to Diablos even in this blessed time. May Adonai. Make I and I especially watchful. May Adonai make I and I especially watchful. Make Adonai make us especially watchful and prayerful. When the enemies, the Telat's appeals, when Satan Yataragame Yuhun's appeals are being made to the depravity that's within us. You see, we have to recognize this depravity that's within us. And we have to be watchful and prayerful when the enemy's appeals are being made to to magnetize and attract that depravity and that and that unrepentant chatiyat and sin. You know, sin that's already within us. Those who are content to follow Christo so far, if if you want to follow Christ. Afar, like yes, I, I believe in the truth, and all of that, but I don't really have time for that. You know, you don't, you don't have time for the studies. You know, what I'm saying you have you know, time for the devotion and, and and really to get your spiritual house in order. But 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 you accept that Christ is kingly character. You accept Jah 
in spirit, you understand? But you, you prefer to follow, you understand, Christos from afar. You know what you're going to find? You're going to find that Diablos has, has gilded, you understand, and, and has gilded a, a mirage, and he's glided himself in between, in between you, you understand, being far off, you understand, from the shepherd of our souls, from the true Christ and his kingly character. A so-called religion, you understand, or spirituality that is not all Christos, that is not of the Moshiach, you understand, will be broad enough to admit any and every kind of worldliness. So we have to recognize that Israel and the Baal Peor, this Khatiyat, this sin that occurred on the borderland, you understand, this will happen on the borderland as well if you choose to follow Christos, you understand, from a distance. You understand, from a distance, God is watching us from a distance. You better get close. You understand, you better draw near. You understand, you better get close. Don't be far off. You understand, be near to God in Christ. You understand, remember the sin bed. You understand, watch and pray. Study always. Seek to fellowship with other brothers and sisters if possible. You understand, and when possible. You understand, when it's not possible, don't forget your friend. You understand, what a friend we have in Yeshua. What a friend we have in Jesus Christos to the glory of our God Father. Abba Kedus Kedus Abba Tach. Watch and pray, brothers and sisters. Watch and pray. بسم آب و ول و منفس دوس اهلو املاک عمین